Well, good morning, and now we know Habari Ghani, Umoja. Today, December 26, would have been my Aunt Micey's 67th birthday. For Edith Arizona Steed, I say, Ashe. For my father, Huey P. McCauley, Ashe. And for my mother, Lanette Steed McCauley, Ashe. I am deeply grateful for this UUSF community, my community, for collecting, collecting the offering twice in my mother's honor to support the black women's health imperative. Thank you so much. And for all of my ancestors, Ashe, I am standing on your shoulders and I am your wildest dreams. And from this vantage point, I want to share with you all what Kwanzaa means to me. For most of my life, I have been one of the few, if not the only, black people in my community, be it at school, at work, my in-law family, or this UUSF community. It can feel quite othering to be the only. I ask myself, do I contort myself to get in to fit in, putting other people's comfort ahead of my own? Do I feel safe turning off the code switching part of my brain so that I may show up as my authentic self? Where can I find a comfortable space that reflects my experience and my identity so I can have a deep sense of belonging by default? When I was growing up, my family moved several times as my mom took new job opportunities to advance her career in healthcare. And my dad and I were along for the ride. Looking back, I realized that my mom prioritized connections that instilled pride in my black and African American heritage, no matter where we lived. My earliest memories of Kwanzaa were in my elementary school years in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We celebrated at Miss Debbie's house. Miss Debbie was one of my mom's sorority sisters in the Delta Sigma Theta sorority. And there were not a lot of black people in Albuquerque, but we were there. And Miss Debbie, I thought she was so cool. Every year, she would invite us to her Kwanzaa celebration dinner, that feast, the day before the last day of Kwanzaa. And her home was filled with African art and sounds of jazz and gospel and a lot of kente cloth. The Kwanzaa table was out with the kanara, with the red and the black and the green candles. You know, in my everyday life, I was the only black kid in my class. And my parents were one of the only black people I saw. Um, but at Miss Debbie's house during Kwanzaa, I saw my reflection in the many shades of her guests' warm brown skin. I felt inherently and instantly loved. I felt like I belonged. We moved from Albuquerque to Louisville, Kentucky for my middle school and high school years. My mom signed me up for Black Achievers, an extracurricular enrichment program run through the YMCA. And every Saturday morning, about 200 black youth from around Louisville would gather to focus on black excellence. We would gather for rituals and learning. Our day would always start with a recitation of the Nguzu Saba. And it was a ritual that we did all year long, not just during Kwanzaa. And I invite you all with me now to close your eyes and, and see this. Imagine an auditorium full of black aspiring youth, an auditorium full of our future leaders internalizing self-determination, 
collective work and responsibility, and faith in unity. I encourage everyone to reflect on the synergy and connection between the principles of Unitarian Universalism and the principles of Kwanzaa, just as Reverend Vanessa invited us to. I'll be honest, I'm a bit anxious to be up here today. I don't want myself or my family to be tokens on display in an act of diversity. But here I am because representation matters. I am up here telling my story to deepen my relationship with this UUSF community and to let other people of color, especially other black people, know that this community is growing to becoming a welcoming spiritual home for you too. I want to offer a final reflection to my community that is not black to ensure that this day is about appreciation and not appropriation. The line between appreciation and appropriation can sometimes be quite thin, but I believe it is always bright and clear. My charge to you is to lean into appreciation by learning more about the rich cultural significance of Kwanzaa. Take the foundation that Brother Clint laid here today and deepen your understanding of the seven principles. As you sing our songs and, and dance to our music and tell our stories, wear our designs, or sharing in our traditions as we're doing here today, Ensure you are invested in the well-being and equitable thriving of all black people. Invest in the black community locally and everywhere by using your vote, your voice, your privilege, your dollar, and your faith. I'll close by returning to that YMCA auditorium. We ended every Black Achievers gathering by singing Lift Every Voice and Sing. It's a song known by heart in the black diaspora, as if we've inherited it within our DNA. When I hear it and when I sing it, I'm taken to the future. I see my two sons, Liam and Sterling, who are now three and one, but I, I see their future. I, can see them sitting in their own auditorium with 200 other bright, aspiring, loving black teenagers preparing for their futures. So let's together sing the black national anthem on this first day of Kwanzaa. As a community, let's appreciate the message of purpose, hope, and strength within its words. Rochelle and I will begin the song, and we will invite others to join. Thank you. Ashe.